Okay, let us let us begin now. We're going to uh, we're going to continue with the Amida, which is, and we're gonna where we last left off. We were doing the uh, we finished the bracha of Arnasa right of of Birkas Birkas Hashanims, and now we're gonna continue with the next bracha is bracha of Kibbutz Kibbutz Galios. So um, so that that's. That's where I continue. Um, and I realized that, um, you know, I was thinking about what to do, what to do for this year. Should we talk about, it's not, it's not, a, it's not really L yet, but L is coming. Um, so I don't know, should, I, should we talk about the David? Should we talk about Slichos? So I was like, okay, let's just continue in the Amida. And the, the bracha of Kibbutz Galias, which we're about to go through, starts off by saying, Tikka Bishofar, sound, sound the Shofar, which is what we're about to do. In Elul. So I realized, you know, this this is really the this is really the the best of both. I combined combined both of them that were preparing for Elul by talking about the shofar. Okay, the shofar is going to come once once we get to Elul. We're going to start hearing the shofar every day. Um, and then uh, so we're, we're talking about the shofar, but we're also continuing with uh with the Amida. So and and maybe by by speaking about the shofar a little bit, it also will help us prepare for for Elul. Maybe have We'll have some other stuff in mind as we as we hear the shofar and Elo um and on and on Rosh Hashanah. So we're gonna go through the words of, of Kibbutz Galios. Um it's it's uh, the next brach on the Shimon Ashray. So first just the words, the translations, and then we'll go through it slowly. We say, Tikka the shofar Rusenu, sound the big shofar for our freedom. We saw Nis the Kabit Goliusenu. And raise a banner to gather our exiles. Be kaptinu yachad, gather us together. May arba kavus aret from the four corners of the earth. Urcha ta Hashem, closer you Hashem. The kavit nidchei amu Yisrael who gathers together the dispersed of of Israel. Okay, so now let's take it slow. So there's a idea that uh that Rav Schwab brings that. This is I never heard before that Shmona Esra is made up of 19 brachos. You see, and we call it Shmona Esra 18, but we know we discussed already there's 19 brachos. So there are three brachos in the beginning. Three that, that we say every time we say Shmona Esra, we say that we say the first three brachos, the Avos, the Guru, Guru, Shem, even if it's on Shabbos, even if it's on Yantif, we're always going to say those brachos. And there's three brachos in the end, which we also say, Tzertzei, Modim, and Simshom. So those are three, the beginning three in the end. But on our regular day, Shimon Esrei, and then in a Shimon Esrei Shachol, there are 13 brachos in the middle. So Rishwab says that the, the first six brachos, if you pay attention, the first six brachos are all about personal requests. Um, we're asking for, we're asking for uh, knowledge, right? We're asking for tshuva or health, right? Knowledge, health, we're, we're asking for, for money, so those those are all individual things. When we get to the seventh bracha, which is this bracha, which we're talking about tonight, Shmuel Esther kind of changes a little bit, and we start talking about uh, Geula. And he says the final seven brachos are all talking about Geula. And he says what's more than that, though, is that actually the final seven actually chorus the, the you know the second half correspond to the uh, first half so so since is the this is the first since this bracha kibbutz galios is the first of the seventh half sorry first of the second half it it corresponds to the first of the first half right so it's the one to the one so so he says so what what, what was the first bracha that we mentioned it was in in the first half it's the 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 bracha about a uh, bracha about a uh, understanding, knowledge. And so it says that this bracha, Kibbutz Galios, corresponds to that. So he explained that just like we asked him for das, or we asked him for knowledge on an individual level, right? That was the first bracha that we that we said. So so too, this bracha is we're, we're, when we're asking about Keula, that's also a bracha about das. It's about knowledge because he says the time of the Keula is a time where the where the Pasuk says, Mala Ha'aretz Dea Es Hashem, that the world is going to be filled with knowledge of Hashem. That really the time of the Geula 
is also a time about knowledge for everyone. So we're we're think first we first we ask about knowledge for ourselves, and then we get to the second half. We ask for knowledge for everyone. Um, okay, and then 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 we just have to understand. Um, so we say tikab b'shofar gadol achirisenu, that which means to sound the uh, the big shofar for our freedom. And so we explain that this, and this means the geula, but why, why does a shofar have anything to do with geula? So this is, this is, can be explained by the Pasuk in Yishayahu, that what does a shofar have to do with redemption? So he quotes a Pasuk that says, that it will be on that day, the great shofar will be blown. And that's, and that's talking about the day, the day of geula. But what does it mean, shofar gadol? If you pay attention to the words that you say in the first phrase, tikha b'shofar gadol, you should blow the the big shofar. So what is it? Why are you saying a big shofar? Small shofar, big shofar. So there's two ways to look at this. That number one is that it could just be mean literally a uh, a big shofar is going to be blown. That's what's going to happen when in the time of Mashiach. We can't really understand what it means that a big shofar is going to be blown. You know, we, we don't really, I mean, we don't really understand what the Nabu is going to happen, but it could just mean it's literal that, that Mashiach is going to come. There's going to be, you know, we used to have, we used to have these massive shofars in, in the shul. Um, so you guys probably remember those massive shofars. So when Mashiach comes, it's going to be shofar triple that size. Maybe, maybe that's what it means. And we say, take out the shofar. God is going to be a huge shofar. So that's a literal explanation. But Shrab suggests that, that perhaps, perhaps that it's uh, really, really a metaphor. When we say shofar gadol, it doesn't really mean there's going to be, it doesn't mean there's going to be this oversized massive shofar from who knows what animal. Um, that that really, really, it's a metaphor for for a time. Right, we're talking about the geula. So he says the shofar gadol means it's a metaphor for a time in history where will be this great proclamation, a universal recognition of a kaddish baruch hu. And that's what a shofar is. It's blowing out to everyone. It's a, it's a great proclamation to everyone. It's a huge announcement that. That everyone is going to recognize Kaddish Baruch Hu on this on this earth. That's what Shofar Gadol is, and he's, and and you know we we that makes a lot of sense because it is you know our mission on this earth is to be Mikai Hashem to sanctify God's name. So the time so the time of Geula when the time of Geula comes, it makes sense that it's going to come with this quote Shofar Gadol right this this huge worldwide announcement recognition. That everyone's going to accept Hashem. That's that is what our mission is. Um, Rashad White writes that he has, a, he has a great quote. He says, "I mean, I guess even this is translated, but he he said this in I guess in Hebrew and or Yiddish, and they translate to English that the era of Teka B'shofar Gadol, this era of Teka B'shofar Gadol, which are, which are the direct words that we say in Shemona Esrei, will begin when world's rulers, presidents, prime ministers, kings." Finally, recognize that Hashem, who Elohim, that Hashem is the is is the God, I and mean, that's that's what this shofar gadol really means. That it's going to be that era where everyone recognizes everyone recognizes this this shofar which blows right this metaphor metaphorical shofar which blows the acceptance of God. That everyone understands that God God rules God rules the earth. That's that's going to be the time of the gula, um, and I'll just say on a on a personal level that um often often when I dive in um you know it's the first you know we talked about the separation in, in the Shemona Esrei that the first six are more personal and the se- the second half is a little less personal person person well um it's a uh, it's more about it's more about every the community about the gula when the redemption will come. So, you know, if I'm being honest, that this is actually for me that the time in Tefillah, which is um, I usually actually space out um, and start like losing myself a little bit. But, you know, with this message, I think it's I think it's very clear how we can make it a little more practical and personal for ourselves that, you know, we can we're we're asking what we're asking for, at least according to this, according to the first few words is we're asking for God to to. Um, be Mikadish himself, right? For everyone to recognize the sanctify God's name in the in this in this world. And that's gonna lead that's gonna be the Gula. So on a personal on a personal level, um personal on a personal level, 
you know, we, we can ask Hashem also, right? Take up a shofar God, allow us, right? Allow me to take part in blowing that shofar, right? Allow, allow you know, unfortunately, not all of us can, uh, are, are so great at blowing real shofars. You know, you need a good ball tokea on, uh, on Rosh Hashanah. You know, you got, you've got to be skilled. Okay, so we're asking Hashem, you know, to, to, to take up a shofar God, to blow the shofar, but also let us take part in, in being the ball tokea, of of this world, right? To the, the shofar blower of this world, who who's 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 Hashem, who sanctifies God's name on this on this on this earth, um, and that's that's what it means. That's what it means um, when we when we invoke the the shofar in this tefillah and connected to the gula. Um, just just a uh, you know one more point about a shofar, just because just just because we're we're getting into Elo. So, you know, we, we can think about that as we as we hear as we hear the show for this month. Just another way that it connects to Mashiach is that, you know, I thought this was a fascinating medrash that that the medrash says that a Kaddish Baruch Hu took so he took the the horns from the ram that was slaughtered in the place of Yitzhak, right? We know Akita Yitzhak. Yitzhak was supposed to be slaughtered and then and then a ram came. So and we and we put the ram there. So a Kaddish Baruch Hu took took that ram he took he so the ram had two horns so he took the left horn and he used it as a shofar for har sinai and the right one which is the bigger one so he's he's still holding on to that ram from yitzvah and he's going to use it to blow during the kibbutz galius um during the time of the mashiach he's going to blow he's going to blow that horn okay so that's just another idea about about a shofar you know that that we that connects to this idea of of the mashiach and the the, the, the Geula, which is um, something we should also also be thinking about during Elo. Besides, for the fact that the sh- the shofar is supposed to awaken us, you know, and help us do tshuva, but maybe that's because it's you know we're supposed to feel like we want to bring the Mashiach, we want to we want to sanctify God's name on this earth on this earth to help to help bring the Mashiach, and that's maybe that's how it's going to wake us up in the month during the month of El before before Rosh Hashanah. Okay, so that's that's the first that's the first few words. Um then the tefillah continues. So this means this is translated in, in most sitters as raise a banner to gather our exiles. Okay, so this was this was very confusing because normally I I nace, right? When you when you hear when you hear the word nace in Hebrew, usually that means miracle, but it's not translated as as a miracle in, in any sitter I've seen. It's translated as banner, and so what what we're asking in this phrase is that we're asking that the nations of the world see this banner, right? They see they that that they take this signal, sort of like we're saying we're telling God to like almost raise raise this flag to signal to everyone that it's that it's really God who's gathering us from all parts of this world, right? That we're asking God to to gather us from all parts of the world to 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 the land of Israel. Where the Mashiach comes and and not only that, but he should raise this flag, right? That's the image, right? So far, we've, we've got, you know, we've got good images um, to think about. As we say, you know, it's I think it's really a just a practical way to help to help make your Shimon Ashray more meaningful. Is that you, you gotta you kind of kind of have these these images, these one these like specific images that you need to think about as that you know, you know, when I get to this bracha, what should I be thinking about? We're thinking about a flag, right? Are going to be thinking about if we're to get to Magin Avram. Magin means shield. So you think about a shield. Um, so this is the flag, right? We're thinking about the shofar, this big shofar that we're going to blow, and we're thinking about this flag. We're saying, telling Hashem to raise this flag, make it, make it known to everyone, make it known to everyone that um, that it's you who's helping us, who's who's gathering us from all parts of this world. And then we go to the next phrase, Vikatzenu Yachad, and gather us together. So the Rokeach explains that that word the mean is that 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 this phrase is saying that that when the Mashiach comes, we're we're, we're asking Hashem that that it should be that all Ben Israel should go up and go return to the land of land of Israel, as opposed to in the days of Ezra, where the Navi tells us that only part of Ben Israel went up. Okay, so that's one interpretation. Um, I I heard from from one of my chavrusas. We were just uh, we were going through the. Gemara's uh, about the base Hamikdash, the destruction of the of the base Hamikdash on on Tisha B'av. We were doing the Gemara's in Gittin, and so um, I don't know exactly how this came up, but he had he had an interesting point, and I'm kind of taking it from him. 
not exactly what he said, but definitely, definitely he he helps me under he is basically his point is that um he 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 understood he said what are these words vikapsenu yachad and see first of all it seems like we're repeating ourselves that we already asked Hashem to gather us together um second of all right the word vikapsenu means gather. So gather, what happens when you gather? Everyone comes together. Then the then the then the Tfila adds another word, Yafat, together. But you already told us you're gonna gather us all. So it just seems a little, just seems a little bit um superfluous to say the Kapsenu Yafat, gather us together. We know you're gathering us. So the way the way I the way the way I, I understand it is that um it's sort of it's sort of a request about that for a Kaddish, for like unity. You know, when you think about What's going to happen? Like, if you imagine, imagine the Mashiach come would come tomorrow. So, okay, what do you think would happen? So, you've got you've got the people, you've got the Jews. You're coming from DC, right? That's us. You got the Jews coming from New York. You got the Jews. You got the Lakewood guys coming. Okay, you got the Spartans coming from Deal, and we're all we're all showing up at the same time in um in in Israel, right? And we're saying, okay, Mashiach's here. Okay, so what, what do you think is going to happen? You think everyone's going to get along? There's going to be no fights, right? You, you know, a bunch of Jews in one place. What could go wrong, right? Um, so, so this maybe maybe what we mean here is that Bekavtinu, right? When you gather us all, let us be biyachad. Okay, let us all be together. Let us be in unity. We'll be in shalom. Let us, you know, okay, everyone everyone's a little bit different, but when we come together, let us all. This all be biyachad, um, and that's you know that's an that's an important thing, and you know we already see see it happening a little bit as as Jews are coming to coming to live in the land of Israel. Um, you know sometimes it's not so biyachad. Sometimes there's a little bit of fighting going on. So it's a special request that when 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 God who gather when a Kaddish Baruch who gathers us up in Israel for the Mashiach that it's biyachad. It's we're all together, we're all in unity, and shalom with each other. And then we say, May Arba kampus aretz. From the four corners of the earth, when Kadosh Baruch gathers us from all of these different places, so um, Rav Schwab picks up on on the word kanfos. That kanfos also means wings. So he says that that uh, which he said mean wings meaning elevated. So when we gather together for Geula, when Mashiach comes, so really the world is going to be elevated by this, like the wings and and people, you know, the rest of the world are going to be elevated morally. They're going to understand. They need to improve improve themselves and their lives. Um, and then finally finish with the bracha of Baruch Atah Hashem Mekabit Nidchei Amo Yisrael. Blessed are you, Hashem, who gathers together the dispersed of Israel. So again, Shrab has has a very interesting um, way of understanding this. So he focuses on the word Nidchei. So uh, when I just read it to you, Nidchei, which is how it translated in, in the uh, in this, the Sidurim, is that it translated as dispersed. Um, but Rishab has a different reading. He says, this is based on a pasuk that it says, It'll be on that day, right? Which is, this is this is what we mentioned in the beginning of, of, of the uh, tefillah. We talked about So, And then the rest of the pasuk continues, And the ones who are lost in the land of Asher, and those, and those who are, Right, nidachim, so can mean dispersed, be'eret mitzrayim, living in the land of Egypt. So that's what's going to happen in the day of of Gula. So Rishab explains that in history, so he gives a little history. He says in Pharaoh history there were two types of gulas, there were two types of exiles. So number one is is Asher, the right that, and that's and that's what we allude to in the pasuk when we say va'uha odim be'eret Asher, those who the, the those who are lost. Will come from the land of Asher. So he says the word Asher means happiness, really. So he explains that the Jews, right, who lived in Asher is the, is, also, is also referring to the land of the 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 Gullus of, of Assyria by Sanchiriv. So when the Jews were exiled in Assyria by Sanchiriv, so you know that that Gullus, they the Jews actually were not enslaved and they weren't really persecuted and you know they lived a pretty good life. And what happened? Eventually, they forgot Judaism, and so that's why the pastor calls them Odin, those who are lost. Because what happens was, you know, and, and we know we see it sometimes in America that you know people live too good, too good, and they lose their Judaism. So that's called the Odin. And then there's and there's and, and that's the Gulf of Usher. And then and then he says there's another Gulf though, 
which unfortunately we, we are aware of too, that's goes of Mitzrayim. And it says Mitzrayim comes from the root Tsar, which means pain. Um, and that's that's another type of goals which which we know happened and the Jews who did suffer because of their sufferings. They either were turned off from Judaism or maybe practically they couldn't keep Torah mitzvos, So they were nidachim. Just nidachim, he explains, means pushed away. They were pushed away. So even though even though in the end of the bracha we say, Baruch atah Hashem, mekabit nidchei amo Yisrael, um, so you think it's just referring to those who those who were pushed away by the painful galas. Jesus, but Rav Shrab says at the beginning of the bracha said, Tikha b'shofar gadol, which is um, which is a reference. So, which is a reference to the whole pasuk. So that's how he explains that. Really, it's going to, it's going to. Uh, Hashem's going to bring back both of them, both those Jews who who were who were lost, and those the Jews who were pushed away. Um, but I was just thinking that maybe it could be that that you know, there's a little hint to this that that the beginning of the beginning of the tefillah starts by tikka b'shofar, blow the shofar. So maybe. When we blow the shofar, um, that's for that's for the the obdim. That's for the people who are lost, um, you know, because you, we're trying to awaken those who are lost for them to recognize that they are even lost. They don't even know they're lost until you tell them they're lost. That's why we're blowing the shofar, and then at the end, right? Once they know they're lost, and at the end, right, we finish by saying the um, those who are pushed away. So that we we're, we're gathering both of them together, and and both of them are going to be. Right, mikhabit is going to be gathered up by Hashem, and so, so I think the 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 message the the message of of this tefillah at the end of the day is that um, you know, you could kind of think about it as Hashem opening up His arms and just you know, this imagine just massive massive arms collecting Jews, different types of Jews, all Jews together, and and bringing the bringing the Mashiach, Shkayach. Thank you.